Hi guys, it's Frenchy and today I'm going to show you three ways to do your split tone in DaVinci Resolve. The split toning is the separation of the red channel, the green channel and the blue channel on the toe of the curve, the top of the curve or both of them. With this, it creates looks with some different flavors of shadows and highlights. Split toning can help you to achieve the teal and orange that a lot of colorists love to do. Before we are jumping into the tutorial, I have a free DaVinci Y Gamut lot that you can download. The link is in the description. Now let's jump into the tutorial. So here we are guys in our timeline and I'm going to show you three ways to do your split toning. Before I show you the three ways, I think it's cool if I make you a real quick breakdown of the grade I have done for Audi. So just to show you because I'm very proud that was our Rec 709 and this is my grade. So there is a lot of steps that happen in this grade. This is pretty heavily graded, but I really love the end look. And just quickly, just to show you what I've done, I am in a DaVinci Y Gamut color space. So I went from the Sony S-Log3 to DaVinci Y Gamut and I ended with the JP2499. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, you can look at my video about the JP2499. I put you the video in the notification. And of course, we are in timeline color space DaVinci Y Gamut, output color space Rex 709 Gamma 2.4. To put an overall look, I put my Budapest lot that you can find in my Colorist Companion Pack. It's a real nice lot. I always use it for my looks. I find that it gives such a strong blues in the shadows that I really, really love. And after the classic, I have some balance where I put some global, but also I moved the temperature a bit. And so in dark, I moved actually my dark area to be less bluish in the shadows. For the background, I have done something quite interesting. I actually just did a magic mask to have the background. So you can see this is without my background node and this is with my background node. It was just to have something dimmer for her to pop out more. Also, I have done the skin because that was difficult with this footage to actually uh, delimitate her skin. So I have done it with the magic mask, which is pretty nice. I like the result. Also for the light, I wanted to have something that is less punchy here on the car. And here I wanted to bring back actually her hair. It's the same face refinement that was mostly to smoothen her skin. And also I've done some touch up because she had a bit of pimples over here and some highlights, some sharpness, etc, etc. So that's about it. I find that actually for this grade, what I would have loved actually to do and that I haven't done when I delivered the file was to put a split tone because I find that with the shape of the car, the light and the grade that is happening, this would be a very nice touch. So where in this note tree, I would put my split tone. What I always recommend is to put your split tone within the part of your note where you are building your look. My look has been made over here in the group post clip but also I have some look that has been done here with the balance and the dark etc with the skin the background. After this everything that is light, face refinement, highlight touches etc etc are more retouching within the frame. So what I would do is that I would create actually a node after my parallel that would be linked to my light touch up because that would be a good transition between um, the balance and the temperature adjustment we have done in the balance to the touch up. So what I'm going to do is just I'm going to create a node and I'm going to link it to my two nodes over here and that's going to be our split tone node. So the first method to do a split tone is to use the curves over here. To use the curves, what is recommended is to find the middle gray because you need this separation to have a very nice roll off in the shadows, but a very nice roll off in the highlights. 
and I'm gonna try to find the middle gray. So for this, I will disable everything and I will keep my CST in and my CST or DRT out, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna enable this node. I'm gonna go to my HDR wheel and go to saturation, put my global saturation to zero and put my contrast to zero. What I'm gonna do now is that I'm going to put my curves in big. I'm going to be sure that I'm going to be with my qualifier as a selection mode. And I'm going to click in the middle of my image. And this is going to give us the middle gray point. What I can do is that I can bring each of my points next to my middle point that you see here. So my blue here, my red here. If you want to slide your points while sticking on the linear curve, you need to hold Alt or Option. I'm going to put them like this. So now that everything is done, what I'm going to do is just that I'm going to come back to what I had as a grade and I'm going to reset everything in my HDR. Now I have my delimitation in my curves that has been set and this is the 18% gray for the image. Okay, so for example, if I unlink everything and I start to do a contrast with my Y, it will have a very nice contrast that will come out naturally because our pivot is the middle gray point. Now I have my red, I can create a point between my middle gray and the end of my curve and I can remove some red from the shadows or add some red in the shadows. So most of the time, for my personal taste, I love to actually remove some red in the shadows. And you can do the same with the green. So if you remove some green, then you're gonna add a bit more bluish tone in the shadows. And if you are adding some blues, then you add more blues or you can remove more blues in the shadows. So technically you can just feel what is right for you. After this, what I like to do is that I like to work my shadows first and after I like to work my highlights. So after I can just go to my highlights and move my red and you see that there's an impact of my red on my highlights. I can do the same with my green and I can do the same with my blue. I like to use this method only for the shadows because I find that with this method, if I want to keep very clean highlights, I will need to create points to actually make my highlights clean, to have something like this. I just find that this is a lot of clicks and this is a lot of steps. So don't worry, my third option will solve this problem. So this is the first method and this is actually the classic method. It's really good to know this because each split tone method that you're gonna see after will be based on this. I'm gonna show you the second method for split toning. And the second method you can use actually the film look creator. So for that, I will go after my JP DRT because I like to put the film look creator in a Rec 709 color space. So that means that I need to do it after the JP DRT or after my CST if you are using a CST. What I need to do before uh, starting anything is going to my color space override and put Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 and Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 because technically we are in a Rec 709 color space. Okay, so I will go straight to split tone. I will enable the split tone and I will put automatically my split tone. And so you see that I can move my split tone. I can move my pivot to see what is fitting the best for my grade. Something that I don't really like with the film look creator is that you have no visual on the split tone you are making. If you are not using a grayscale 
or uh, anything like that, it would be very difficult actually to know where you are and what you are in priority, etc., etc. So that is why I wouldn't recommend you to use the split tone from the film look creator. That's my least favorite option. Let's say I just mess around with it sometimes, you know, like to put a slight look, but this is not something that actually you should put all your hopes on. Okay, then the last method, and this is the method that is actually the most convenient out of all three, is to use the DCTL from Pixel tool called Split Tone Hue or Split Tone RGB. So for this, we're just going to come back to our node tree and we're going to create actually a node that is at the same place as our split tone because this is exactly like where we want it to be. For this, I will go to my FX and I will type DCTL and I will choose my pixel tool split tone hue advanced. So what is great with pixel tools is that you have a version that is basic and you have a version that is advanced for each split tone. So the basic version is a more simplified version of your split toning and works pretty well. This is way more catered for people that don't don't really want to have too many options for the split toning. It's lovely actually to use, but I prefer to use the Hue Advance or the RGB Advance because I have way more possibilities within this. Everything is broken down. So we're going to see together what's happening. So something I need to show you first before we jump into the sliders is that there's multiple transfer function. We are in DaVinci Ygamut and it's recognized that we are in DaVinci Intermediate so we don't have to change. But if for example you need to change there's so many color spaces that you can work in and I find it really cool because it really allow you to use this tool in any situation possible. And let's see our curve. So what is great with this DCTL is that you have a view of uh, the curves. So the linear curves that you're going to do the split tone from. And so for example, if I move around my sliders, I will see actually exactly what's happening in my footage in terms of hue in my split tone. So what is great with this DCTL is that you have everything broken down and you have actually six range where you can do your split toning. So you have the high, which is the top of the curve. You have the high mid, which is between the mid part of the curve and the top part of the curve. You have the mid, which is the middle part, the low mid between the bottom of the curve and the mid part of the curve. And you have the low strength, which is actually the bottom of the curve. And so this is super cool because I can really break down what I want to do. So for example, if I want to have really just the shadows affected and the mid affected, I can do it, which is amazing. So let's put some shadows in our low and some highlights in our high mid like this. And what we can have now is that we can change the priority of our hue. It's great because if, for example, you want to experiment to see if having the red higher and the blue lower or the blue higher and the red lower. You can see what it does. It's really handy and also you have the visual which I love because then I know exactly what's happening. Also, you can increase the contrast if you want. This is with the sub and add. You can subtract some light from the low part or you can add some light from the low part. And something that I love so much which is actually the clean black. So it will help you to clean your black and have blacks that are more neutral, but you can really regulate where you want it to affect your image. 
And it's the same with the whites. You can have really clean highlights by just actually cleaning the highest part of your curve. And so all these are just with sliders. It's so fast. It's so great. And I love that you always have the visual here where sometimes with the curves, like when I do my split tone, when I want to clean my blacks and I want to clean my white, the problem is that I need to create so many points that it doesn't make sense anymore. So yeah it's it's super cool i really love that and i just wanted to show you really quickly the uh, rgb advance and you can see we are still in davinci white gamut we have a separation of the red channel green channel and blue channel i find it super cool because for example when i know exactly how much color i want to put in my shadows or in my highlights i can just go to this tool and remove some red in my high mid to have something that I really like and yeah I find that this is very handy and really make my looks very sleek and so then I can just clean my black a bit and clean my white and this is lovely look at this so this is what we had and this is actually the split tone with the pixel tool split tone also something to mention that is also in the split tone hue this is actually the saturation mask. So I'm going to put the highlight saturation mask to show you. This is to regulate to where your split tone will be affecting the image. So for example, right, I can make my split tone affect my wall image, but also I can just like put my split tone to affect this part of the image only and it can really create interesting looks so I think this is super cool to explore. So guys if you are interested in the pixel tools I have a link in the description where you can buy this DCTL. This DCTL have been built by the talented Jason Bodash and Cor Hendrickson. So these two colorists are really people you can trust because they really know what they're talking about. They are doing really wonderful tools on Pixel Tools and I can only encourage you to explore their DCTL because they can really unlock a lot of possibilities for you and your grade. So as you could see, the DCTL from Pixel Tool is amazing and so convenient to use. If you are interested in this split tone DCTL, the link is in my description. You can buy through this link. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you again for the 10,000 subscribers. It means so much for me. And also, I'm going to NAB soon and I really hope to meet you there. So for people that are coming to NAB, please Put this in the comments and I will hang out at the Black Magic booth so I hope to see you there. Subscribe to the channel if you want more content on color grading and I see you next time guys. See you! <laughs>